Today, guys, we are going to take a look at this item from Billy Goat. It is their number 441130. It's their forward discharge elbow. And that elbow fits on their blowers similar to this F601V that you see here. And it goes on the discharge of the blower on this end right here. And it's kind of unique the way it fits. It doesn't fit the way I thought it would fit. Because you see these two tabs? They're on the side. I assumed that this thing, when you got it, would somehow fit on here and maybe rotate a little bit and be captive by those side pins. But it doesn't. Now this item isn't very cheap considering what it is here. I mean, it's just some rubber. It's a thicker, heavier rubber there, but you wouldn't think it would cost what it does. Now I was able to find this item on eBay and uh, got it for a good price, I felt, $61.60 plus tax. Shipping was included, so $61.60 plus tax wasn't a bad deal. Now I have seen prices going into the 80s, 20 plus more dollars than this, so, and then some had even shipping, so with this, with just tax, I thought that was really good, so that's what I did. And uh, it got to me in three days, uh, as the seller uh, said. And the seller happened to be Granger. And here we see the Billy Goat number and then the Granger part number. And here I'm on Billy Goat's website. Now I kind of want to look at this um, one um, review that gave it one star and uh, by whoever this is. And it says horrible product. This is a horrible product. It is extremely difficult to install. I have not yet been able to install it. The directions say to simply fold the rubber and insert the elbow into the chute. This is unbelievably difficult to do. It's like trying to insert a nickel in a hole the size of a dime. There's just too much rubber to do this easily. I've spent 15 minutes on two different occasions trying to do this and was unsuccessful both times. I was hoping for a device that could easily snap in on or snap on or off, but this clearly is not that. I even tried trimming off some of the excess rubber, but that didn't change anything. It's impossible. And now I'm probably stuck with it because I trimmed off some of the rubber and can't return it. Don't know what's going on, but I found that not to be the case. So, I will show you. Now with this, you get several things. You get the front air uh, director, which they're saying the part number is a 441127. And then you get this air director bracket, part number 441128. You'll notice it says attaches to the how uh, to the housing to allow the front air deflector to be transported with the unit at all times. I did something a little different, and I'll tell you why. The other thing you get is if you're going to mount it the way they want, the way they have it, is you'll get this nice uh, bolt or, or a large like leg type sc uh, screw to attach it where they uh, where they say they you know that they want it. And um, again, then you get this little piece of paper for those that need it. And um, but I will demonstrate this for you. I want to show you how this thing was shipped in this um, small cardboard box. And they used this material that I've only seen one other time. 
and that was in a very expensive telescope that I had by Tech Telescope Engineering Company. It was a 140 millimeter diameter refractor, and they shipped it in a heavy box, cardboard box, and then they had this foam type material. And by God, it got to me in good shape. It, uh, uh, they had a whole lot more than this, but apparently the way it works is you put it in there and then you activate this somehow and it just expands. But anyways, so this is only the second time I've seen something shipped. And so the deflector sit right inside of here. As you can see the form of it. It's very cool. It had the directions down in there inside the deflector and then also the directions instruction pamphlet was inside there and um, so that was quite interesting and it, it, it uh, I, I like the way they did that everything comes to you in good order you'd have to really work at da damaging this so let me demonstrate how this goes on so you'll note that it has this heavy lip up here that heavy lip is going to set up against here preventing it from going in any further and the way this is flared out that flare works in the opposite direction keeping it from coming out so you've got these two opposing uh, thing uh, these two opposing uh, uh, things that keep the deflector in and then my thought is wow you turn this thing on it's got a hell of a lot of power how is it going to stay in i'll show you so let's attach this so Basically, I'll just put it in here like this, fold it down like that, and just push it in. And that's it. Really simple. And taking it out, piece of cake. I just push down, take it out. So I really have no idea why that one reviewer had so much trouble getting this in I mean it's just I don't know but that's why I thought I'd show that in case somebody sees it I've not seen any YouTube videos that demonstrate putting it on now there might be I just haven't seen it so it's a very simple task not, nothing hard about it at all all right let's fire this thing up low idle. One of the things I want to demonstrate is how this isn't coming out. So you'll see that it's out a little bit here because it's pushing. Okay? But it stays no matter where you put it. So now let me crank up the idle. Now if you recall, I said it comes with a bracket. 
but I kind of changed where it was and I'll show you why here so we're looking on the right side of the unit as you're standing behind it and they've got this like boss into the housing here and it's got a hole and so what happens is that bolt that I showed you that leg type bolt would hold the bracket on here and the bracket has a slot that slot would fit like this it comes back at a 90 and comes out and loops around and then that keeps it from rotating and keeps it here but I saw something that might be an issue now perhaps it won't be an issue I don't know but I just notice a lot of heat you know will come off this engine and with it sitting here I didn't want the heat to come around now obviously Billy Goat that's where they put it so perhaps there is never an issue but I decided to mount it elsewhere and by the way this is the uh, shutoff valve that I put on for my gas so that way when I'm done using it I just shut this thing off okay and then let it let the carb uh, drain all the uh, fuel out so here's that bracket and it's on the left side of the handle as you're standing behind the unit and this is the original bolt going in the opposite direction instead of coming in the bolt head from this side it's I'm having it go through this side so two things I had to do this bracket I had to put this in a vise and I just put put I put this uh, area into the jaws and I just lift it up a little bit to make more of an angle I didn't want too much of an angle I wanted this to still be like that so that it would in fact keep it from rotating but I wanted to give it more clearance and then I had to drill this hole a 5 16 it's real close to it but but not quite so I just drilled this hole bigger 5 16 and then all I did was put the original washer and nut on the other side and so now it's up back here instead of down here now obviously right now we're looking at the um, right side if you were standing behind the unit and I didn't want to put it here because of the cable the chute cable so the other side made logical sense and again for me this should be out of the way of any heat it's far enough away from the engine down here that it won't have any heat and it works great and and absolutely very little modification bend that drill the hole just a hair bigger using the same bolt uh, you don't even have to buy anything